Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to talk about Ooh. the French Revolution. Viva la France! And it was inspired by the American Revolution. Uh, the shots heard around the world were the <laughs> were the uh, the battles of Lexington and Concord, and, and uh, the United States <clears throat> inspired the French to to have their own revolution. But it's not going to go the way that they planned. Yes. Stand up for your rights. So Europe watched in horrified astonishment as France, the largest and most powerful nation, moved towards revolution. So all those kings and queens throughout Europe are taking notice. Yes. And just imagine that you're a worker, long hours, little pay. What are you going to do to fight for your rights? That's sort of the, the inspiration. OK. All right, so power in the hands of a few. We've talked about this several times. Think about the triangles, right? Usually the smallest group, um, the 1% is going to have the most power. So in this case, in France, they were known as estates. It's just another word for the social class. So we've got the church or the clergy, um, smallest but have the most power, no taxes. Then we've got the second estate, which are those nobles. Uh, they have some sort of power. They pay little taxes, but of course they want to keep everything the same. And then the third estate is actually about 97% of the population and that makes up almost everybody else so the bourgeoisie who are the merchants who you'd think would have a little bit of power but they're lumped into that third um, estate the laborers the peasants and they're the group that pays most of the taxes ties to tithes to the church um, and really has no say in the government very little rights okay in the bourgeoisie they're the ones that embrace the enlightenment so mm -hmm. they're aware of all the ideas of freedom and uh, equality and we're yeah, see. which is kind of where that they're in that section because they're intelligent, they're educated, um, but they're lumped into that third that third class. All right, so tensions are rising. Oh. We see a huge population growth in France, and mostly it's that lower class. Yeah, you need to feed people, so they're hungry. People are inspired by the American Revolution. Rents are going up, up, up. So taxes are the taxes <laughs> are really high. People are jealous of the upper classes, especially that king. Um, liberty, equality, fighting for those rights that we were talking about during the Enlightenment. And of course, the king and queen are blowing through the taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. Marie Antoinette was a bit of a gambler, That's so they right. lost a lot of money. <laughs> she lost a million dollars playing poker. Wow. All 21. Right. And she liked to spend, spend, spend. Fancy yes. gowns and jewelry and... She got the nickname Madame Deficit because she put France into debt. And they were weak leaders. Yes. And then this... Guys, you don't have to memorize this, but just a little, uh, I don't even know, graphic organizer. All of the causes of the French Revolution, broken up, kings, money, everything like that. All right, so here's a picture of Louis the Sixteenth. Very fancy. You guys know his grandfather, Louis the Fourteenth. And yes. That's where the beginning of all this resentment <laughs> comes from. And it just keeps on continuing. And beautiful Marie, who is actually the daughter of Maria Theresa, that's who right. we talked about in Chapter Five and of Austria. And because she was from Austria, the people did not trust her, mm -mm. which contributed to the the hatred of her. And so what it comes down to is they need money. They have lost a lot, and Louis is debating about whether he should tax the nobles. And this is that middle estate. So he calls all three estates together, and old voting rules say one vote per estate. But of course, why is that an issue? Because the lower class will not be equally represented. Exactly, because it's just one vote. So two to one is always going to win. And if you tax the rich, then you're going to lose their support. So the exactly. king is in some trouble here. So the third estate decides, you know what, we've had enough of this. Um, we want to separate ourselves. Um, they call for, to call themselves the National Assembly. They want to get rid of the old regime or the old way of doing things. And they think that the people should vote individually, kind of like we do today. But like we said, Louis orders those original voting rules, and so one and two can always outvote three. And like we said, the rich are gonna wanna keep their money, keep their power, there's no way they're gonna wanna pay taxes. All right, so the third assembly goes to, uh, to meet up and they're locked out of a room. Yes. So they find a tennis court and they, all the members go in there. They and play they, a little game of tennis? Yeah, Is that sure. how they uh, made their decisions? So they all agree to, to nobody <clears throat> leaves a room until they draw up a new constitution. And uh, Louis the Sixteenth is is a little bit worried. He's going to station guards around his palace for protection. Yep. And the uh, the third estate, if you're going to start an uprising, you need some weapons, and so they're going to storm the Bastille, which was a prison slash armory, and they are going to try to get weapons and successfully take over um, the Bastille. July Fourteenth is known as Bastille Day That's in France. Right. Yes. 
I mean, we have the great fear. There were rumors that the, uh, the attacks are going to spread. People started rioting, burning uh, legal records. Uh, the women of Paris are going to break into the palace. Go ladies. Demand that Louis the Sixteenth <laughs> and Marie Antoinette return to Paris. And, uh, and their leaving was going to signal a great change. And uh, these, were, these were scary. These, uh, in, in the, for the Bastille, uh, people, ooh, people were parading around the streets with guards' heads on spikes. Yes. Um, women were going around with knives and axes. I know. The ladies were really upset about not having enough food to feed their families. And so they were really taking arms, taking so, up arms. So this revolution went a little bit differently than the American <laughs> yes. Revolution. And so, again, the storming of the Bastille, there are some images, and this is going to be, um, they called it like the symbolic act of revolution. This is going to be the start of, you know, what's going to be happening. You don't have to do that assignment, guys. We'll tell you what your homework is. <laughs> so the next four sections will continue the story of the French Revolution. revolution. Okay, we didn't go away. Um, mm -hmm. So revolution begins. So where we left off, the great fear, terror spreading throughout France. Who's mad at who? Who's going to, you know, risk their lives and who's going to pay the price? So even looking at that picture, a lot of people getting marched to their, uh, looks like they're getting marched to their death. And we're going to talk about that machine right oh, there yeah. at the end it of this presentation. It was invented by a doctor. Interesting. Yes. So the old regime is dead. So the old way of doing things. The Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen sounds a lot like the Declaration of Independence. We've got our motto or our slogan, liberty, equality, fraternity. So a brotherhood. We are all together in this, rich or poor, and essentially we want to fight for our rights. To party. <laughs> to party. And again, get that money, get those other people out of power, and have more equality and more of an equal say. Louis and his family are going to try to escape, and they weren't very slick about it. They're wearing their regular clothes yeah. on main roads, and they didn't get very far. Um, so they're going to have to go back to Versailles. Silly, silly Louis. So officially, Louis is the king. Um, but we see another constitutional monarchy, just like we uh, left off in England. Um, there's going to be um, a legislative assembly, kind of like the parliament, I guess we could say. And they're going to be segregated or separated um, based on their, um, I guess, stance. So the Radicals are going to be on the left. Um, they want a lot of change in government. The moderates are going to be in the middle, um, some minor changes, and the conservatives are going to sit on the right, um, and they want very few changes, um, if, if any, uh, in the government. And we see some of this now, like left, right, center. Yep, the Democrats are the left, the radicals, the Republicans are the conservatives, and some people are, are in the middle. Yep. Um, so we've got the haves and the have-nots. So the haves, the very fancy, uh, they were known as the emigres, uh, the nobles and the businessmen who uh, fled France hoping that they could leave and then they would come back and restore the old way of doing things. Okay. It's a way to run when the fighting gets tough. And then we've got the sans culottes, without knee breeches. And yes, they wore pants. Um, they just didn't wear the fancy pants. These were the workers who wore the trousers, who were in the, you know, in the trenches, really like fighting for the revolution. Okay. All right. So I'll talk about this slide. Uh, throughout <laughs> Europe, which all the countries are monarchies, other, other leaders are scared. In Austria and Prussia, which are right near France, um, they want Louis back in power. They want to see monarchies staying in power especially in their own countries. Yep. Um, legislative Assembly says no, so war will be declared against these countries. Prussia says if you harm the royal family, we will destroy Paris. Uh, angry mobs response, they're going to capture Louis, Marie Antoinette, and their children. Oh, that escape plan didn't work. <laughs> so things are not going well in France. Who can you trust? There's fear everywhere. Rumors are being spread. Uh, there's war now, not only within the country, but uh, outside yep. as well. Um, citizens will raid prisons, killing uh, thousands of people in the September massacres, which was in which month? I think September. Oh, very good. Yes. Um, nice fall day. So they're going to take matters into their own <laughs> hands. New national convention, they abolish the monarchy. No more monarchy. France is now a republic, like the United States, and adult males can vote. Sorry, ladies, again, but, you know, Also like the United somewhere. States. <laughs> And the Jacobins are going to hijack France, and they are a radical political organization. To the left, to the left. They're going to try Louis the Sixteenth for treason. He'll be found guilty, and they're going to be off with his head. But tell me about the new device invented. Ah, uh, yes. Do you say guillotine or guillotine? 
I like guillotine. Me too. It sounds a little French, don't you think? <laughs> um, so the guillotine um, was actually invented by a doctor, um, you know, short story. And the idea was if we are going to behead people, we want to do it in the most efficient way and try to do it in the mu most humane way possible. Because there were mistakes made when you just had the axe. You missed people's heads. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't go all the way through. It could have been very, very painful. And so this was a way to, um, you know, try to do it in the most dignified way as possible. But, um, you know, efficiently. Too. Quickest. And, and they used it in France all the way until 1977. Which is crazy. Which I was alive at that time. <laughs> I was going to say. Because I'm old. <laughs> I wasn't. There's the so picture of the So there it is. Um, some say that you can still hear and sometimes see for a few seconds after your head is cut off. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor, but that would be pretty crazy. And um, Lubner, you had an interesting story about... That's right. If they didn't like you, they would make you uh, face up so you would see the guillotine coming down to cut your head off. Mm. That's probably how I would go. And yeah. they did that to Queen Marie Antoinette. So she got to see the blade coming As down. As it was coming down. Very, very scary. So, what's going on, friend or foe? Um, the goal is um, all of these people, rivals against the new government, still need to be stopped. Um, Maximilian Robespierre um, is in charge now, and he is set on creating a republic of virtue. So, get rid of old France, and he sets up this thing called the Commit Committee of Public Safety. But not like police; these are like enforcers, and they are going around and killing anyone and everyone who may um, go against him and, you know, the power that he has in place. Okay. And uh, nobody was safe here nope. in, in France. Uh, 40,000 people will be murdered at this time period. Even people who were friends with uh, Robespierre. It was kind of a, uh, if you didn't like what he had to say, if you said anything about it, you could have your head chopped off. So even if you were in the inner circle, you were not safe. So he acts as a dictator. And one of the interesting things is that if you were convicted in the morning, you could be executed by lunch. It was sort of around the clock uh, executions and beheadings. Absolutely. So <laughs> France will go from a monarchy to a republic and now to a dictatorship. Yep. But Robespierre will be killed as well. So we're going to have a new guy in town. Napoleon, not dynamite, God, <laughs> gosh, <major> ham. Napoleon <laughs> Bonaparte, who we'll be talking about the rest of this chapter. So that brings us to an end to section two. Yes, French Revolution. Liberty, equality, fraternity.